Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest episode of Swan TV. I'm James Groves, Managing Director of Indigo Swan, an energy consultancy based in Norfolk, England. Uh, today, I am joined by Alexander Verbeek, who is a Dutch environmentalist, a public speaker, diplomat, and former strategic policy advisor at the Netherlands Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I mean, this is the best guest we've ever had. No offence to any other previous guests, but Alexander, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me. Would you would you like to introduce yourself a little bit more, if that's okay? Well, thank you. Thank you for this uh, very generous introduction. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm no longer a diplomat. I've been a diplomat for a long time, but I, I stopped doing that some, some six years ago. Uh, I work independently now. I'm, I'm connected to quite a few um, uh, think tanks uh, and, 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 and universities as well. Uh, but basically, I, I work independently and I used to do public speaking all over the world, but then we got the pandemic, so there was no more travel, uh, nor were there big audiences in a big room to talk to. So um, increasingly, I'm writing at the moment, uh, waiting for the, for the vaccinations to, uh, to be distributed so well that we can uh, travel again and, and speak in publicly again. So at the moment, you see me more online. Or, um, or people can read um, uh, whatever I'm writing on the planet, uh, which is a Substack say, newsletter. I was going to say, as well as going to start, to be fair, we, we saw you're the editor of The Planet. Um, how, how, did that, how did that come about and um, where do you find your inspiration for the articles that you write? Yeah, um, it, it was kind of, uh, you know, normally if you start a daily newsletter, you uh, come up with some kind of business plan and you make a lot of planning about what you're going to write about and how and, 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 and all kinds of other things to prepare. I basically didn't prepare anything. I, I hadn't heard of Substack um, just four or five days before I started. I was just in a weekend looking around and thought, hey, this is interesting. So I put on my Twitter account that uh, starting next Wednesday, I would start writing on Substack. And then I kind of, you know, I'd made this promise, so I had to start. <laughs> and I thought I would do it like once or twice a week. Uh, but in practice, I started now uh, nearly two months ago. And I've written practically every day. Wow. Uh, on the other hand, on some days, I wrote actually twice. So people get that in their email. And yeah, they like it. It's, it's rapidly growing. Uh, it's it's a bit of a strange mix. Uh, sometimes it's it's really about you know climate change and whatever um, CO two is going up and we should be very worried. And sometimes it's just storytelling. It's about you know last night I wrote about uh, anything from hummingbirds to uh, the love life of Napoleon the uh, Third and a trip to Arizona and um uh the ingenuity on mars and i don't know what else all in one article uh, I, which is a style i don't have a word for yet to describe but people seem to like it your style it's your style but what what so, yeah you say people like it what what i suppose what are you looking to achieve what message are you looking to get out through the different pieces you're writing and the content that you're putting out on the planet what, what what's what's the main aim for you what do you want people to take away from yeah you? i think what i wrote last night is just for fun um, yeah. but uh, in most articles, especially during the week when I'm more serious, there's basically two messages. One is that uh, we're really on the wrong track on this planet. We are uh, creating, you know, climate change, uh, the loss of, of, of biodiversity of nature, uh, there's massive pollution problems. So we really, really have a lot of serious problems that we should be very worried about. And more importantly, that we should take action on. But the, there's a second story there. Um, just sending out this negative message, you know, hey guys, we're all gonna die, is maybe frightening, but it's not going to change anything. If you don't have the other side of the story, what is at stake? What are we losing? I mean, the the the, the beauty of nature. I mean, there's just there's just so many beautiful things around us that we should appreciate more. So I write about. Uh, bring children out more in nature that they learn to appreciate it go out yourself more in nature and what does that mean for you i wrote about research that says if you spend only two hours a week in nature that it really improves your health i mean they've, they've researched this on, on big numbers it, it sounds a bit you know uh, that i'm that i'm floating high up somewhere when I'm, when I'm saying this, but this is just, you know, serious scientists research this and yes, people that spend two hours or more per week in nature uh, live a more healthy life. And, and I talk about, you know, if we do, do take climate action 
um, it's also better for your health. We, we lose close to 9 million people per year worldwide on air pollution created by those same fossil fuels that create climate change. So tackle the one problem and as a bonus you get, you know, you save 9 million lives a year. Uh, that's like three times as much as what we've lost on, lost on COVID uh, in the past year. So, do, do you think the pandemic's helped with people getting out into nature more? Do, do, would you say that's, that's had a positive impact on what people are doing now in that way? Yeah, well, I, I think on, on, on that aspect of going out in nature, uh, it, it's clearly something I've experienced. You know, the, the, the nature where I, when, when I'm in the Netherlands, I'm now in Ottawa and Canada, by the way, but, but uh, when, when I'm in, in the Netherlands, I often, you know, go running or walking in a piece of nature where you, where you don't meet anybody. And last summer, I just noticed that in, in all those 30 years that I go there, I'd never seen so many people. Nor did I see so much trash, by the way. So those new, those people that are new in 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 nature that uh, used to go shopping on a Saturday afternoon, but now by lack of alternative, go walking in nature. Um, they they should still adapt their behavior a little bit. And uh, so I try try to take out their trash, but there's a, a limit to how much they can leave there, and I can take out. And do you think do you think governments do you think the government globally is doing enough about climate change? What's what's your view on that and how the governments across the across the world are tackling it? Well, definitely not enough. Um, some haven't even started uh, and only talk about uh, getting started. Um, as long as I mean, the bottom line is the greenhouse gases that we produce should rapidly go down. The opposite is true. Greenhouse gases are still increasing. Actually, in this year, uh, it is predicted we will see the second highest growth ever in the production of CO2, the main greenhouse gas that we should be worried about. So are governments doing enough? No, absolutely not. Uh, it, 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 it is, it's, it's just a trickle of what should be done. Uh, but on a more hopeful note, I think I can say that um, I am more hopeful than, you know, a year ago or just half a year ago. And, and uh, there's two reasons for that. I think that the main reason is that in the country that is historically the biggest um, producer of greenhouse gases, um, and if, if, you, if you count them all up, that's, that's the US, which is still per capita uh, the highest producer of greenhouse gases in the world they have decided to vote out the, 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 the chief climate denier uh, in the world and replace him with uh, President Biden, who is actually committed to, taking, to, to, to tackling climate change. Mm -hmm. um, is he doing enough? No, he's not doing enough yet, but there's a completely new tone. I mean, climate change has become mainstream in politics. They are working on it, um, even his chief climate envoy John Kerry is saying that what they do now or what they've promised to do now is still not enough but it is ambitious and America is is willing to lead internationally on taking climate change serious so that is it's not enough but it's a huge improvement so the the, the trend is 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 clearly more positive but those that are active on on raising awareness for climate change you know their their work is is not finished i mean churchill would say we're we're perhaps at at the end of the beginning yeah. both of climate change as well as on climate action but this is going to be you know a very very serious uh, file for 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 decades to come and and we have not a day to lose in taking action absolutely and like you said there is there's a lot in government you know it, it's getting more press you see it more i think the one thing i noticed though is there's not a huge amount of tips for people to on how to maybe live their lives a little bit more sustainable yeah. you know there's a lot of headline figures there's a lot of headlines being published in the press and stuff like that but actually when you drill it down to the to the common man so to speak as far as what can we do there is little information so i wondered from your from your point of view what what maybe hints and tips you might have for for your sort of general public as far as how can they live more of a sustainable life what can we be doing to help and what's what's going to have the biggest impact really well, the main thing you can do to help is use your vote. You, uh, if this is for a British audience, you know, you live in a democracy, vote for a party that really takes 
you know, your future life on this planet and the life of your children and grandchildren serious by avoiding this disastrous climate change. And that 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 asks for a series of measures of, of the government. So vote in a government that does take action for anybody in the world listening to this, where you live in a democracy, where you have influence, use your vote and, and connect it to that if you want to do more get active, uh, start writing, start uh, doing interviews with Swan TV and, 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 and tell people <laughs> what they can do. Um, so that is, the that is I would say, the main thing. And then because it is basically a question of governance more than technology or, or knowledge or anything else. It's a question of governance. So you need to write governance. But looking at your own household, um, uh, one of the things you can do is is fly less because that is that is really flying is 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 really bad you know worldwide it's it's on on all the production of greenhouse gases maybe just just somewhere between two or five percent depending on how you count it but for a lot of people in the western world listening to this uh that is really a significant change that you can make because flying is is really bad that's one another one a really important one is eat less meat, uh, especially beef. I mean, beef more than any other meat is uh, is 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 highly um, polluting in 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 the sense of of, of greenhouse gases. I mean, it, it uh, worldwide uh, forests are being slashed down uh, that that should capture the carbon. Uh, those those cows do, of course, produce um, a lot of uh, methane. Um, and uh, so, so balls on 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 basically on on any of the greenhouse gases. They have a huge impact, and you know the cows will love you for it because they're treated awfully. Uh, there's a good reason we call it meat instead of that cows uh, because that makes it easier to accept. You see on the packaging, you see pictures of happy cows. They're actually not happy. They're not walking outside. The ones you see outside are just. Uh, are, are just there in, in, in the first half of their lives, uh, but they are kept in horrible circumstances. And uh, if you use dairy, you know, if you use milk or yogurt or cheese or those kind of products, do realize that that milk is not for you, but for a cow. The only reason that the cow keeps giving milk is that after the first calf is born, the calf is stolen away. These are horrible scenes. Just Google at them. And, 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 and many people don't even know that. But a cow is not normally giving milk. But only if you if you keep abusing them that way, if you keep dragging away the calves from, from, from the cow, you, you get this effect. And it's good for your health. Eat less meat. I mean, just... And it's it's not as difficult as it sounds just start with let's say monday a meatless monday and you'll soon discover that only in the past few years the alternative meats you know the, the plant-based meat have become so nice and tasty i remember I, i've been a vegetarian for ages but i remember how horrible those vegetarian hamburgers were yeah, they uh, they're now actually very tasty so try them absolutely absolutely is there, is there any is there any countries around the world that you feel are doing a good job well, yeah, obviously, there's uh, some countries that go, do a good job. Uh, a country like Costa Rica has, um, I, I don't have the numbers in my head, but th they had been slashing their rainforests massively and then decided to stop that. And now they have regrown so much. I mean, it's still second generation uh, uh, rainforest, but uh, they really, really do a lot uh, in that field. A country like Bhutan, is it's the... It's a, a tiny country for those who don't know it uh, in the Himalayas uh, between India and, and, and China. It's the only country in the world that um, actually produces, uh, uh, that actually captures more CO2 wow. uh, than it, it produces. So they should be an example for, for everybody in the world. If you look more, if you look clo closer to, to the UK, um, a country like Denmark that's already in the 1970s said, you know, we should move to, to wind energy. And that was maybe not even so much for environmental reasons. It was at that moment just like, you know, we want to be more independent of countries that can boycott uh, sales of, 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 um, of fossil fuels to us. So we need something else. But they've become extremely um, environmentally conscious. 
uh, and uh, countries like New Zealand are, are active and uh, let's say generally Nordic countries are, are doing quite well. So there are good examples. Not one of them is doing enough actually, right. apart, from, apart from Bhutan. Yeah, um, but Bhutan need doesn't really fun. count worldwide, you know, they're, they're such a tiny country, so I admire them, that's but it's... The problem it's... though, isn't it, Alexander, you say that, and that is part of the problem, where you say some people don't even know where that is, some people don't even know there's a country called Bhutan, people don't yeah. know that, so, like you say, they're a huge example that we sh they should be setting to other countries, but like you say, some people don't even know it exists, Yeah, that's part of the problem, I suppose, to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah, so it's it's. Uh, I mean, we we mainly talk about say twenty countries in the world. Yeah. They they produce about eighty percent of the greenhouse gases. So if those twenty countries can 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 agree, you know, those are the real big countries in the world. We talk about the U.S. and China, etc. If they could just agree to to rapidly transform their economies to to a greener economy it's it's it will be a way to save the planet and that sounds dramatic but that's actually what we're talking about i mean if 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 we keep warming the planet as we are doing now and as i said we we only just get started you already see the effects i mean looking at at what what life's going to be like on on the planet if we get into a three or four degree warmer world, I mean, it's, it's, it's dramatic. The, the, the amount of people that, that will have to, to flee from the places where, where they're living now, the food problems, the water problems we're going to get, the conflicts that we, we can expect. Um, it is worse the investment and it's cheaper to take action now than trying to repair things afterwards. And it's, it's, and it's not impossible. I mean, it's often presented in the, in the media as you know oh it's so so complicated it's, it's so difficult of course of course it's a huge undertaking but you know that's a challenge i mean that's that's the same you know when we wanted to fly to the moon and people said no it's so difficult well actually you know we did it yeah and uh, half a century ago already you want a planet here to protect you want you want yeah the earth that, that, that you can still protect in many years to come which like, as you say yeah. they are, we, we, we won't have and then yeah like, yeah perhaps, so. yeah if you if you love your children then you should love the planet uh because you know that's that's what's left for them and uh and then you should you know protect this planet and 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 take action and don't think you can wait any longer this is really really urgent uh coal coal that's shifting gears a little bit so, so coal plays such a such a big piece in this and you know, whilst the there's a rise in renewables, you know, it has increased, etc. But the demand on coal is still massive. Um, how do you feel countries can maybe move away from this demand uh, of coal and, and push the greener options? Well, yeah, coal is is really the worst one. It's the it's the most uh, polluting of the fossil fuels. Um, but by just focusing on coal, you might give the impression that you know we can still use gas or something because it's only about half as polluting as coal there would have been an interesting story 20 year, years ago or so but by now the, the urgency is so high we have to we, we we don't have that luxury anymore we we wasted that window of opportunity so now we really have to move away from all fossil fuels uh, on on uh on coal, you know, it can be done. I mean, look at the UK, you have a pretty good track record. Um, not everywhere. I mean, there's still talk of opening a new coal mine, which I think is incredible for a country that is hosting in November the World Conference, where all countries have to decide on on, on being more ambitious uh, and setting plans. Then you don't talk about opening a coal mine. Um, but UK has brought it down uh, enormously in the past uh, years. You, you you see a huge increase of of uh, alternative um, uh, energies. Um, so th that is hopeful. Or look at a country like Abu Dhabi. I mean, they're um, or or the UAE. I should say they literally li literally live on top of oil. I mean, that is why they are so rich. Yeah. And they massively invest now in solar panels for their own energy. So they're still exporting oil. It's, it's their main source of income, uh, which I'm not happy about. But it's interesting to see that purely on economical reasons, not on environmental reasons, they decided that building solar panels 
was for them a much better investment to get their own energy uh, than uh, than than using uh, uh, than using their own oil that they don't even have to transport they live on top of it so that is that is a promising story uh i think for coal we mainly have to look well, well we have to look at many places but china is of course a country we should be really worried about they still invest in 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 new coal mines practically every week and that is uh so you know in in, in europe we're fighting to to close just one coal mine and at the same time you see the speed that coal is increasing in china and mind you a lot of that coal is used to produce energy to produce the goods that you in the uk are buying so uh, instead of just getting green in your own country you have to look on on a global scale if, if you're just exporting the pollution to other countries that is of course not tackling climate change that is just you know greenwashing your own country but still ruining the planet absolutely absolutely how, how long do you, how long do you think we have? How long do you think we have to to sort this out? Really, realistically, you know, how many years do you feel we need to really get on top of this to make sure that we don't end up with even bigger problems? Well, we uh, we need in uh, in the next decade to really work full time every day as if you are fighting a war. Uh, in uh, reducing our emissions. So if we would reduce them by about 7% per year, yeah. uh, then, uh, then by about uh, 2030, uh, we, we are on track, but then we still have to continue in, in, in phasing out those, those fossil fuels. And mind you, in, in the past year, when we basically all stopped flying and we stopped a lot of economic activity because of the pandemic, uh, we we hardly saw a dent in 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 um, in, in in the production of, um, of of greenhouse gases. Of course, those policies were not climate change policies. Uh, I'm not allowed to leave my house at the moment, but you know that doesn't that is not nice for me. But that doesn't help anything on on uh, on fighting climate change. So you you have to talk about different kind of measures. Um, so I don't want to give the impression that it's it's something that is impossible to do, but it, it does take um, a, a massive concerted effort in, in a worldwide cooperation uh, where we also have to think about um, those countries that are much less in a position uh, to, to, to take action. And actually those countries that contributed the least to the problem are the ones that are most affected. So, I mean, looking at your own government, on the one hand, uh, being very ambitious in lowering uh, your own greenhouse gas emissions, but slashing uh, development aid budgets, that is that is just you know solving one half of the problem. But at the other hand, at the other end, you know, making it making making it worse. So it's it's uh, it, there's a lot of communication and and you know kind of marketing of the policies here involved. Uh, but you do have to look at, at, at the overall picture of policies. And that includes that uh, you help uh, the poorer people in the poorer countries. And, uh, and, and you should help those governments as well in transforming their economy. Uh, and at the same time, you know, Im, Im, improve the government and make it more fair and, and, and more inclusive uh, for everybody. Absolutely. I think that's the thing. It's, it's, it's a global problem. It's like, I think it's, it's, it's very interesting. Each country is trying to individually tackle different bits, but yeah. ultimately we do need to look bigger than that, don't we? We need to look yeah. beyond where we are ourselves and look at the whole world as a whole. Yeah, our, pro our world has become so small, you know, it's, it's that, that's, that basically sums up the problem that we have. Yeah, everything is growing. Our, our consumption is growing. Our energy use is, is, is growing. Our production is growing. Our waste is growing. The population is growing. The, the demand for food and water and energy is growing. But the only thing that is not growing is, is our planet. And so we are now what, what the Club of Rome already said in the early 70s. We are reaching the limits of growth. So you, you can't have infinite growth on, 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 on a finite planet. I mean, everybody can, can understand it. So 
when in, in, in the past decades, you know, everybody was talking about globalization, globalization of the economy and of worldwide transport and travel and everything. But we kind of missed the message that the environment is, uh, is globalizing much faster yeah. uh, than, uh, than, than our economy was. So the environmental problems that used to be you know, when you and I grew up, uh, an environmental problem was, you know, very local. It was uh, whatever, a waste dump uh, next to your city or something. And then during our lifetimes, we've seen it, it internationaling, internationalizing with acid rain that was kind of cross country. And then we had a hole on the ozone layer. And now the challenges that we are dealing with are really international. So if, if, a country on the other side of the world is is burning too much fossil fuels you have in your own country the same impact of of that action so that also means if you know if you all together create the problem you also have to solve it all together and you have you need a, a, a more multilateral system you need you need all countries work together to tackle these problems and it asks for for solidarity and and you know a kind of kindness of 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 helping each other in, in instead of competition absolutely and, you, and the, the, we will put a link when we post this out but you did a tedx talk recently about um a lot of this which was amazing by the way so uh congrats on that i think one of the one of the first virtual tedx talks i'd seen where you were you, <laughs> from home because unfortunately we can't do it in front of audiences but we'll definitely pop that on because that's that's got a lot more stuff in, in involved in that as well um so i suppose just in closing alexander what what would be what would be your closing message i suppose what would be what would be the one thing for anybody watching this today to take away um you know to put into place to put into action that's going to make make a significant difference i, th I think the main message is I, I i touched upon that a few times already but i think the main message is twofold on the one hand this is a very urgent serious crisis of our planet that if we don't take action it's going to be horrible and i can talk for hours about how horrible it is but the other message that i think is the most important one this can be done we yeah. have the knowledge we have the techniques we have the money we know how to do it it's been proved over and over again this is not an impossible problem to solve we can tackle it and that's where you have to start you have to know that you actually can do it and that the investment now is just the best investment you can make if you now invest in 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 you know a new um cleaner and 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 happier uh, because that's related to it as well happier planet Absolutely. um it's it's the best investment that you can make and it's it's doable we can do it but in order to get there you personally have to get active you have to vote on a party that 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 recognizes uh, the the urgency of this problem and uh, and and besides from that try to to try to take action at at home as well you know insulate your house use less energy consume less you know whatever is the last thing that you bought do you really need it <laughs> yeah um, you know especially now especially yeah. now it's people sitting especially at home. now yeah true yeah order 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 it. click happy deliver this deliver that but you know major alexander thank you ever so much for joining me i really do appreciate it like you say it's an extremely serious problem i hope somebody to i hope everybody who watches this takes a little something away from it whether it be meat free mondays which i love which is something i will probably take away from this and go and try uh try to do um or, or whatever else it may be i know everyone will take something away from this so thank you so much for joining me i really do appreciate it you're welcome it was uh, very nice to join have a good day